Warning, this show contains strong language and topics that some viewers may find offensive. Listen to discretion is advised. Now get the cards, the charts, from my generation, I'll take them. Come on, come on, come on, let's get it out. The Super City. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Super City. My name is Sam Brooks, and today we have a uh, we have a sad bit of news to report on. There was a retirement last night. I'm, uh, I'm sure you've all heard of this by now. It was a retirement of something that's been true to our hearts for a very long time now in the world of wrestling. Roman Reigns' staircase entrance has officially been retired in the favor of Roman Reigns coming out to the ring like a normal person. I know, I know, you're all very upset to hear this, and I am too, but it's it's in our hearts, and it will always be there, but we have to move on now. With me is Andy Quan. Do the words Daniel and Brian mean nothing to you? No, and Liam Dunn. Yes, sadly, Roman Reigns has... He's retired his entrance. Uh, he's gone with something new, something a bit more uh, unoriginal. But you know what? The thing is, we're all a little bit grieving over this. What the I would fuck like, are you talking about? I would like to change traction uh, a little bit just because what for me, the best way to get over grief is laughter and joy and happiness. And you find plenty of that in Super City. And my little bit of joy to the world, my little bit of happiness to the world, is Mr. Andrew Kwan. He is my gift to society. You didn't bring me on this earth! My mum and dad did, you weirdo! So, as Andy may remember, last week I started the show with a little bit of a brain teaser. Yay, brain teaser. I'm very excited to hear this. So I'd like to give him another one. Oh, that was good, I'm so happy, yay! <laughs> So, <laughs> all you gotta do is get it right, Andy. Like, it's, all, it's all down to all you. you. Do. Okay. So, and Sam, if you get this, you can't say anything. Gotta stay quiet. Oh yeah, no, I'm keeping quiet. Bearing in mind, this man has a degree, and I don't. So let's just let's just bear that in okay. mind. He does have a degree. So this is just to get everyone happy again after the tragic news of Roman Reigns' entrance. What mm. tragic news of Roman Reigns? Right? Johnny's mother had three children. Right. Right. Are you with me so far? Johnny's mother had three children. The first child was named April. Yeah. The second child was named May. What was the third child's name? <laughs> we don't know. You haven't told me. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to say June because I don't know. <laughs> How many children is it? Wait. How many children? <laughs> Wait, how many uh, Johnny had three? No, say no. it again, say it again. Okay, right. Listen to this one. I am. Really Sam, listen. I am. Sam, have you, have you got this? Yeah. Can, can, you, I, can I make notes? Oh, yeah, notes? I got this. I got... No, you can't make notes. <laughs> right. This isn't geometry. Okay. X plus Y equals two. This ain't that. This is a riddle. <laughs> and, and, and anyone listening at home, please play along. Let us know if you've got this before Andy has. Bearing in mind, he has a degree. Stop okay. saying that! You're making right. me look like I'm a fucking idiot! Listen. Johnny's mother had three children, okay? Yes. The first child was named April. The second child was named May. What was the third child's name? <laughs> Wait... Wait, you don't know because his name is just like. Uh, <laughs> wait, it's June. Is it June? <laughs> wait, June. <laughs> his name. What was the. I don't. I, so you're going with June? <laughs> it depends. I don't know. Yes. No. <laughs> okay, well, one more. One more. One more reading of it, then I give up. Really listen to the question. I know! I listen to the question. Okay, listen. Listen to every word I say. One right. more time, I think. Do you want me to say it slower? No, I'm not. 
fuck's sake, I'm not stupid. Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> hey, but listen, Johnny's mother had three children. Yes. The first was named April. The second was named May. What was the third child's name? Hey, you can't. Oh my hey, god, the what, answer's what, 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 there! What, what, the answer's just right in what I said! <laughs> right, I'm gonna say it really slow. Oh my god. Really okay, That's final a... one. Final one, okay? Listen, really listen. Right. Johnny's mother yes. had three children. Yes. The first was named April, the second was named May. What was the third child's name? You don't get it now. This man has a degree! <laughs> he doesn't understand sentence structure. Uh, hey, hey, so... Oh, oh, so Johnny's much. mother! <laughs> what was the third child's name? Johnny's mother! <laughs> what was the third child's name? Johnny! <laughs> 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 How do you have a degree and I have nothing? And I got that five minutes before you did. On the first go. What does that say? What does that say about the, the, the fucking British education system? What does that say? The answer, is, the, the answer is in the question itself. How did you not get that? Oh, this is this is my gift to the world. This really Some is. Some may say it's, it's a it's a hindrance, but I think of it as a gift. Well, you may have your gifts to the world. My gifts to the world are well, the user comments that we have to take oh, a look very at. Very good, very good. Last week we talked about the ruined plans for WrestleMania and why they suck. I gotta say, it has jo it was Johnny's mother. It was so obvious. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Anyway, right. I wasn't on that show, but I gotta say, if the Undertaker faces Braun Strowman, I am giving up with life and everything in it. Aaron Walker says, "Andy seems like someone who would cry if his toast was burnt." Is this true, Mister Quan? No. Have you ever burnt toast before? Yes. Have you ever shed tears over said burnt toast? No. You haven't. No. Well. 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 There's a story? Why would I... Why would I be... What? He when? can't do toast. That's what? the problem. That's why it's always burnt. And that's how he's built up a resistance to it. He always burns toast. That's what's wrong always... with it. It's burnt. We don't always burn toast! In Bristol a couple of weekends ago... Oh, it's 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 and... The toaster was stupid! The toaster was stupid! <laughs> the stupid toaster! Because the toaster, right? <laughs> this is why it was stupid! Because the toaster the bread... Wouldn't fit in the toaster. There's a story attached to this. I had no idea. I didn't think it would be a story. It could only fit like fucking vertically for some reason. We had a toaster. Fucking stupid. So, Aaron, I think you're correct. I'm gonna die on the toast. It's fucking toast. I have bigger problems in my life than toast. That's amazing. That's so amazing. Hey Andy. Toast. Andy. <laughs> you know Heartbreak Kid 101. Yes. Oh, ducky ducky. Here we go. I nominate Andy and I for Feud of the Year 2016. Don't what? worry, Andy. There's yeah. always Tinder. What? So I think yeah, I think that's the uh, the final chapter of this legendary feud, uh, Andy Quan versus Heartbreak Kid 101. There was no feud! What are you talking about? No, it's, it's in my nominations already, so it, it kind of did happen. I, it's, it's a front runner for Feud of the Year 2016. And we're already in oh, February. And, like, mm. and in second place is Andy versus Toast. Is that it? Actually, I think in second place is Andy versus Maths in general. There you go. <laughs> Andy versus the English language 2. <laughs> Twice oh. in a lifetime. Which Marcos Perez concurs with. Feud of the Year 2016, Andy Kwan versus Math and Logic. There you go. Mm. He's already got mm. a vote. Mm -hmm. So he's got I, three I votes. Tried. I just realised 
Heartbreak Kid 101 was like, you use Tinder. I do use. You could have bypassed that. You didn't have to say anything. No, you, you know what? I could have. But, you, 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 know. Could have just, you could have just not said that. <laughs> but now that, now that you've said it, it's there. <laughs> It'll be there on the internet for the rest of eternity. There you go. Final comment we got from Successor of Fate, also known as Fernando. Thank you very much, guys, for the shout. You yeah, guys are doing an amazing like job you. with the show, and I'm hoping the best for the Supla in the future. Is he future endeavouring us? That sounds like he's future endeavouring Yeah, it I sounds think... like, I've done my part, I must leave now. You're fired, like damn it. You're fired from the signs. Uh, Maybe he had an epiphany. He's like, I put up a sign about this show where one of the co-hosts can't do riddles. And Why screams about that? toast. <laughs> uh, yeah, can't do toast. Yeah. Can't do can't toast! toast. You botch toast, basically, is what we've learned. Toast. The toast Are you the shit. Sin Cara of toast? I'm not the... I'm not Toast Cara. That's not a thing I am. Toast, toast Cara. Cara. Toast Cara. <laughs> Sin Toaster. Sin Toaster. Sin Toaster. Uh, <laughs> if there was ever a time to create a fictional character, now's the time. Sin Toaster. Oh, you know what I'm going to make in 2K16 there? Sin Toaster? Sin Toaster. Sin Toaster. <laughs> and his greatest enemy since Brock Lesnar. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we, we need to get serious now, guys. We need to get we serious. Do, we, we really do, quite sadly. Uh, Andy, what, what are we talking about, if it wasn't already obvious from the title up there? Uh, unfortunately, uh, Daniel Bryan has retired... From professional wrestling. Daniel Bryan on Raw, depending on when you're listening to this, either last night or on Monday, uh, announced on Twitter uh, that he was retiring from professional wrestling and he gave a speech as to why on uh, Monday. If you haven't seen it, please watch it after this. Um, but basically, the reason was concussions. And fun fact, in his first uh, six months of wrestling, he suffered three concussions. So you could probably see why he's retiring. Indeed, indeed. It brings an end to a, a very long and storied career. Um, I'm, dare I say, one of the most popular wrestlers since, like, The Rock and Stone Cold, like, the, that kind of caliber of star. We're not going to get that again for a very long time. Like, the, the, the fan reaction to Daniel Bryan was so unique that it really it left an impression on everybody, like across various companies of all ages, and it's like, we're never going to see this again, and for that to end, like, some would say prematurely, I would say at an okay time, because let's, let's be honest, right? Daniel Bryan won all of the titles that he could have won in that company. He had his WrestleMania moment. He had two mm. WrestleMania moments, one of which we will never forget, where he beat Evolution over the course of one evening. Who else can say that they've done that? There, well, there isn't much left for him to do in this company, other than the occasional dream match. So if there is ever a time for him to go out, it is definitely now, but it is still very saddening to say. I gotta say, I teared up when I watched his retirement speech. I gotta say, I did tear up. For me, I've got to say that Daniel Bryan was, he was the fan. He was the embodiment of the fans. <clears throat> I'm not going to say you, WWE Universe, the fans. <clears throat> and the reason why I say this is because back in, it must have been 2014 when uh, the, the Yes movement really kicked off, uh, when he wasn't in the Royal Rumble and the fans just kind of shat on it. And for a while, WWE, WWE was adamant that they were going to have Batista versus Randy Orton in the main event of WrestleMania. And that's what we were going to have. And that was, whether you liked it or not, that was going to be the WrestleMania main event. And the fans didn't want that. They wanted Daniel Bryan. And the fans fought so hard to get him there. So he, to me, represented what the fans can really, really do. Uh, he was the embodiment of the fans. Now, I'm not saying that the fan interaction and the, the fans influencing the product is going to be dead because that he's leaving. It's not that. But really, in a world 
of wrestling today that is so PG, so uh, driven by sponsorship and advertising and corporates. And it, it was amazing that this was a guy that the audience wanted to succeed. And she thr- she, through sheer popularity, it happened. You know, they we tried it with <clears throat> we tried it with Zack Ryder, and he got a small push to US champion, and then he got shot on by Cena, and then sent back to NXT, for example. It was it was very difficult for fans to really try and get WWE to notice the people that they wanted them to notice. But Daniel Bryan, not and it's not just the fans. Obviously, he was a good worker, but it was really the first time to me that. In my time of watching wrestling, where they really just listened to the fans and gave the fans what they wanted, um, that's that's what Daniel Bryan, in my eyes, represents. Anyway, <clears throat> I mean, I I've been following the guy's career from Ring of Honor, and like, I actually happened to see him live as Bryan Danielson. Um, when was it? <clears throat> uh, this was Noah back in two thousand and nine. Oh no, this was before then. Oh, I think uh, you saw him in Coventry. No, this is even further back. This was in, um, where was it? In Broxbourne. Like, it was a Ring of Honor show. Uh, I think it was like one of the first times they came over. And uh, I, I, I can't remember the reason why he wrestled twice in one night. Oh, yeah, Austin Aries got hurt. That was it. Uh, so he wrestled twice in one night and defended the title twice. I think the first match was against a Japanese wrestler that no one recognizes now. Um, because it was a hardcore match, and then the second one was a match against Roderick Strong of all people. Um, <clears throat> was it Roderick Strong, I think it was. Um, but yeah, I mean, basically, we've been following this guy's career ever since uh, Ring of Honor, and yeah, I mean, he he got fired. At one point, for choking Justin Roberts with a yeah, let's let's tie. let's actually let's talk about his career. And I want to specifically talk about his career in WWE. I don't really know anything outside of WWE, <clears throat> so Andy might be able to fill in some of the gaps that we don't know. But one thing that I do know is that between the years of 2001 and 2003, Daniel Bryan was an enhancement talent talent for WWE slash <clears throat> F. Um, there's actually a match that you can find online. I think it's on WWE's YouTube channel where he faces a young John Cena on Velocity. The same match that would eventually main event a, a SummerSlam uh, was given away on a Velocity, of all things, uh, which was very odd. And then, obviously, he, he left, or, or I don't know if he was just kind of freelancing, and he, he went back to the indie scene. And <clears throat> Andy, uh, you might know more about the indie scene than, than me and Sam do. At this well, I, I actually know what happened. Um, he worked <laughs> for the WWE for about 18 months in the uh, 2001, where he was an enhancement talent on Velocity and Heat, etc. Um, he left to compete in Japan for a while until 2004, oh, right. where he went to Ring of Honor and became a founding father of that company. Yeah, I mean, he's one of the, like, it's, he was in the first main event in Ring of Honor with Doug Williams and Loki. He didn't win the title. I think, yeah, Loki won the title first, which is, in hindsight, probably not good. Um, but yeah, he was kind of one of the the key people. When people think of Ring of Honor, like back in the day when it was good, you would think of CM Punk, you would think of Samoa Joe, and you would think of Brian fucking Danielson. The guy, I mean, in retrospect. The stuff that he was doing there probably wasn't the best idea in the world because that might even, you know, shortened his career. Because he was, he, I remember he had a match with uh, Takeshi Morishima and, like, he had a detached rep there during the match and just continued the match. He was yeah, doing... but I don't think a detached retina is going to give you a concussion. No, but, you know, you, 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 you probably shouldn't be doing shit like that, you know. But, I mean, fuck. As you can tell, he's pretty well. He's he's pretty sad. Yeah, and he's, upset. he's on the verge of tears. No, oh, just I just have a fucking it. cold. I'm just trying talking to... about it. He's no. on the verge Who of left, tears. Who left all of these onions here? Right? I just I don't know. <laughs> Who's cutting up the onions here? <laughs> the point is, is that um, the guy, the guy, uh, the guy's just uh, an awesome technical wrestler who, oh, quite yeah. frankly, should have probably. I don't want to be like JR and be like, the Ring of Honor guys need to slow down, but 
back then, I think everybody was doing stupid shit, like chair shots to the head with fine and all that kind of thing. Well, to be um, fair, Andy, he was in Ring of Honor in the mid-2000s, and he's only retiring, what, ten years later. True. So I, I think his Ring of Honor days had very... I don't want to say they had very little impact, but they didn't have enough of an impact to make him retire before now. So, might have been his WWE mm-hmm. style that had something to do with it, but I don't really oh. think it's down to the styles, if anything. Oh, we were going we to start talking about that. Of course, in 2000 and something, Nine. I'm not quite sure, 2009, he got signed by WWE and was sent down to their developmental system. Uh, before eventually debuting on the old version, the original version of NXT. Now, for some, oh. of our fans, for some of our fans who may not have been around during the original NXT days, it was very different to the NXT we have now. Obviously, the NXT we have now is, in of itself, a developmental brand. But back then, NXT was a quote-unquote reality show. God's Honest Truth, Google this, Wikipedia it, it's God's mm-hmm. Honest Truth, there's probably mm-hmm. some episodes online. It was a quote-unquote reality show where I think it was 10, maybe 11 uh, rookies were partnered with WWE pros and then were kind of given challenges and then had matches against each other, had matches against pros. And Daniel Bryan was in the very first season, probably the most successful season. It had Wade Barrett, uh, Darren Young, Heath Slater, uh, PJ Black, who went by the name Justin Gabriel. Ryback, uh, who went by the name of Skip Sheffield. And I want to take a moment yeah. to look at the uh, the pros of the season Daniel Bryan was in, because uh, each of these rookies had a mentor. These uh, these WWE veterans, these people who could guide them through this new and strange company, all right? Chris Jericho. Yes, fair enough. R-Truth. Mm, fair enough. Matt Hardy. Mm. Uh. Christian. Mm. Uh. CM Punk. Fair yeah. Enough. William Regal. Fair enough. Yeah. Carlito. Mm. And The Miz. Oh. The Miz so being guess... Daniel Bryan's pro. Oh. Guess who got The Miz. Guess who got The Miz. And then, not only that, but they started an angle with Daniel Bryan. Knowing that Daniel Bryan had, obviously, a following more than any of the guys going into NXT. WWE did the thing that they loved to do to internet darlings back then. you got to remember, it was a very different time. It was only five years or six years ago, but it was a very different time back then. If you weren't a WWE-made star, you weren't a star in their eyes. It, very different world. But Daniel Bryan, because he was the internet darling, they decided, you know what we're going to do? We're going to have Daniel Bryan go on a losing streak. He's going to lose every single match that he wrestles on NXT before eventually being "quote unquote" eliminated. That was the truth. God's oh, truth. Oh, Every and, match. you're not you're not selling us enough. Michael fucking Cole of all people would bury him every week. Mm-hmm. Yes, the Miz himself, his own uh, NXT mentor, WWE pro, was putting Brian down constantly, saying, "You have no charisma. You have no personality." It's really a way to... And it's strange. You look at it now, you think that's so weird. But this was honest to God how they were selling him for a while. Um, then, of course, after NXT uh, came the Nexus and the very famous angle where I think it was John Cena and Rey Mysterio were having a match. No. Um, I might be wrong no, with this. No, it was actually CM Punk in a Rey Mysterio mask. Oh, okay. Well, either way... There was, an, there was a Nexus, uh, that's probably why I, I got confused, because he was in the Rey Mysterio mask. Uh, but there was an, the Nexus came out, and they attacked Cena, they attacked Punk slash Rey, I'm, I'm not quite sure. Punk they Ray. destroyed the ring. But the thing that people most remember about this angle was that uh, Daniel Bryan decided to choke out, then announce Justin Roberts with his tie. Hmm? Um with, his, with Justin Roberts' tie around his neck, choke him out. And WWE did not like this. They did not think it fit in with their PG products. They thought that kids might be going around strangling their fathers, which I would love to see a three-year-old do. Um, I mean, you got to think, you know what? violence in a wrestling product? No way. Yeah. Kids are going to copy that shit. In a product where you swing chairs at each other and other stuff, why you can put your dad that? through a table, that's fine. But you yeah, yeah, you choke him with a tie. You can hit each other. No, no, you can hit each other on the backs with steel chairs. 
but using a tie? Nah. Oh, no. God, no, we can't be doing that shit. No. No. Sorry. So, WWE, in their infinite wisdom that they always have, because um, they always make a cock up every year, you can make a drinking game of their cock ups. Mm. Um, this time in 2010, their cock up was let's release Daniel Bryan. So, Daniel Bryan got the sack and he went back to the indie scene. But there's not really any point talking about this particular section of his indie wrestling career because within, it must have been only a few months, he got rehired by WWE um, for, because what they were doing, obviously, Nexus was facing WWE uh, main eventers like Edge and Chris Jericho and all that. So then what they did was they set up a match between Team WWE, legit was the actual name, and Team Nexus. And WWE was like, oh, we don't have a... Me- like, we only have, like, six people. We need seven for this. Uh, so guess who the surprise member of WWE was? <laughs> Big Show's champion for, what, two minutes? Very much like Roman Reigns. And then Daniel Bryan cashes in and wins the belt. Um, and then, obviously, he holds on to the belt and he starts to play a heel. He's dating AJ at the time, who we know goes on to marry uh, CM Punk in real life. He's, quote-unquote, dating AJ. And then they go on to WrestleMania, and he loses the match. In he loses his title match against Sheamus in 18 seconds. Oh yeah, because of a kiss. Because yep. of AJ's, AJ's kiss. The real, the uh, real kicker of this is that that particular WrestleMania moment happened on April 1st. I thought they were kidding. No, that was the actual finish to a WrestleMania match. Yes, yes, that actually happened. He lost the World Heavyweight Championship in 18 seconds at WrestleMania 28. That's in the opening match. match. In the opening match. A world title match. Great start to pay-per-view. In, in the opening of WrestleMania, Oh, by my the way. God. So, that... Happened. However, that might have been the greatest thing to ever happen to Daniel Ryan. Because the yes thing got so over, and instead of, you know, Daniel Bryan's career basically being finished, he suddenly became one of the biggest things ever. And, after that, he teamed with Kane, which well, normally... Forget, well, hang on. There's a bit we're missing where he had a very, very good story feud with CM Punk and AJ Lee. Oh, yeah, I remember that. For the WWE title, where it was the first time they actually had a compelling diva in the main event uh, storyline involving the world title. Um, a, a feud that I still remember to this day. I would say it was better than the quote-unquote uh, Summer of Punk uh, the year before. And it's weird to think that all three of those people are now no longer with the company. That's yes. Yes. But then, yes, eventually, uh, after that ended, he did join with Kane to create possibly the worst teamed name, uh, te- named team ever, Team Hell No. And uh, yet it was one of the most highly entertaining tag teams in years and has it been. It was. Yes, it was. But I still dislike their name. I thought their name was awful. But yes, they were the most. They they had been one of the most ta- entertaining tag teams in a, in, in a long time, um, and then I don't really remember what else happened after that. He kind of floundered again with Kane. They won the tag titles, I think, one maybe two times. Then they feuded, as Kane does with all of his tag team partners, um, and then that's when he started to get traction and main event uh, matches. Because then it was around after uh, that time. Where Cena said, I want to defend my title at SummerSlam. I'm nominating Daniel Bryan. And then Daniel Bryan wins it. He wins a big one at WrestleMania. Uh, not WrestleMania. Not yet. That's a bit forward. <laughs> he, he wins a big one at SummerSlam. He wins the title from Cena cleanly. Not even CM Punk did that at SummerSlam. The, I think the previous year before or something. Or two years before. I believe it was two uh, years previous. Yeah, not even CM Punk did that. No. Nope. Um, so he beat, he beat Cena cleanly. But of course... It had to be ruined. Triple H, the yeah. referee, had to get involved. He pedigreed Daniel Bryan in the middle of the ring. And then Randy Orton came out and just pinned him. So he beat Cena, but it took one pedigree to put Daniel Bryan down for about a minute. Um, and thus the authority was born. The authority yeah. was born. And of course they made Daniel Bryan... Daniel Bryan at that time was pretty much what Roman Reigns is now. Mm. He was their arch enemy. Except, was trying, except with Daniel uh, Bryan, it's believable. Yeah, it was believable because and that was he the didn't first look time. like. Well, he didn't look like a champion. Let's be honest. Mm. He had the long hair, the shaggy beard. He was five for eight. He didn't look like a world champion. Roman Reigns, he looks like he could be like a poster boy for the company. I could get that. Well, he is. 
yeah, and I get that. Um, so the, the, the authority was born and Daniel Bryan was getting screwed over. He won the belt again, at, I think, Night of Champions, only to have to, uh, for the authority to vacate it the next night. Uh, again, pissing off more fans. Um, so then, obviously, he's fighting uh, the authority. And then suddenly, for no reason, he starts feuding with the Wyatts. Nobody so, really uh, knows what why. What the fuck was that about? But this is why I'm mentioning it, because no one really remembers it. No one really knows why he did it. And he even briefly joined the Wyatt family for like a week, right? God's honest truth. And then he rebelled against the Wyatt family. And at Royal Rumble 2014, he had a match against uh, Bray Wyatt, which I believe he won. No, no, Um, no, no, Bray Wyatt won that match. Oh, well, there you go then. Even better. So he didn't even beat Bray Wyatt. Uh, But... The reason why I'm bringing this up is because at the very same Royal Rumble, people were anticipating Daniel Bryan to be in it. Don't forget, Daniel Bryan at this point was now shit hot. The the Yes movement was insane. Right, it, like, we're not selling this enough. The chant was everywhere. Everywhere. It was in American football matches, football, soccer matches over here. It was like all Even over... Even British awards shows on television had the Yes chant at one point. This yeah. is how amazing it became. It right? transcended it, popular culture. It was so, everywhere. You'd think WWE would jump on that, but they didn't. Instead, Rey Mysterio got number 30, and when the fans found out that Brian wasn't going to be in it, <laughs> I have never seen a crowd turn on a match more than that. Um, I think it, it was worse than the 2015 Royal Rumble turn. Oh, it was definitely uh, worse. Are you kidding? Yeah. It was definitely worse. Uh, Rey Mysterio basically had to turn heel in the middle of the match. <laughs> because they, everyone was just booing him. Everyone was just no, booing everyone him. everyone was booing everyone. Everyone was booing everything, basically. Literally, everything. the only time that they cheered was when Rey Mysterio got thrown out. Yeah. That's what I mean. They kind of had to... Rey had to improvise a heel turn there. Um, anyway, moving on, he, of course, then gets back into a feud with the authority, uh, and he's like, I want a shot at the title, and I don't, I mean, I'm probably not selling this enough, I'm trying to paraphrase and just move on as quickly as I can, there's a lot to get through, as you can tell, eventually he feuds with the, he feuds with the authority again, which culminates in a match with Triple H at the opening of WrestleMania, with the winner getting inserted into the main event of WrestleMania. You can tell this was done a little bit on the fly, as as you can probably see. Uh, The winner of the match would be inserted into the main event of WrestleMania for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, because at this point it had been unified by Randy Orton. And he beat Triple H, he went into the main event, and he made Batista tap out. And he had his WrestleMania moment. He won the world title in the main event of WrestleMania, only to have to vacate it due to an injury. Oh Fantastic. dear! Uh, not not only before that, his first feud as champion was with the Demon Kane. Oh god, the birth of this piece! I forgot that. That's why I'm moving on. Yep. So he had to vacate it, and uh, so the title went back up for grabs. And Daniel Bryan was on the sidelines until when did he come back? I believe before the 2015 Royal Rumble. Yeah, so he came back for. Just before then, and he went into the Royal Rumble, 2015 Royal Rumble, and got eliminated. And the crowd turned on him again. again. The crowd turned on the match again for the second year in the row. This, this is how shit hot the guy is at this yeah, point. But you would think you would think the company would have learned by now, but by that point, not when it's, no, not when it's Roman Reigns. Oh fuck, not when Roman, Roman Reigns. Reigns. No, 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 you got to think, right? You got to think, right? This is this is how the board meeting like went. Vince is like, so what are we gonna do? We're going to have Daniel Bryan go into the match and be eliminated before Roman Reigns comes out. People will love Roman Reigns. People won't have to and see then, him fight Daniel Bryan. I'm a and genius. And then when Daniel, Bryan, when Daniel Bryan gets eliminated, Goldust comes out and Goldust's <laughs> Titantron says, Shattered Dreams. We're going to Shattered Dreams on the Titantron. Kevin Dunn, do that. Okay. Like, that was literally a fucking... That was, that was, that was planned. That yeah. It was actually like they had that shot and they were just like fuck you fuck you for making us change wrestlemania last year fuck you for like not doing it this guy. year you know what like you know what they Mania have the fort they have the fort to do that they have the fort to eliminate daniel bryan and get a nice clean shot of a titan tron saying shattered dreams but this year when the biggest free agent in perhaps history aj styles makes his debut what do we see 
Roman Reigns' confused face for about five whole seconds. Not, keep Roman not, the, not the specially made I Am Phenomenal Titantron reveal. No! Confused Samoan Roman Reigns. Like, here's the best thing about that, was... They kept fucking up all night with camera shots, but that's not, that's not the point. Like, no. they really, like, in 2015, they thought, you know what? Let's not, let's, let's not have Daniel Bryan win. No. 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 Let's, not, no. let's not, not, like, do the right thing that we should have done last year. Don't do the right thing, do but the Reigns for me, thing. For me, the worst bit was that not only did they not do that, they had Daniel Bryan get uh, uh, eliminated and the fans backlashed again. Then WWE was like, okay, we'll make a, a match where Roman has to put his number one contendership on the line against Daniel Bryan at Fastlane. And, and people were like, oh my God, maybe they're doing another U-turn. Maybe they're changing it again for the fans. It'll be Daniel Bryan versus Brock Lesnar. That would be insane. What different style of uh, wrestling. Uh, that would be amazing to see. No! Got... no, 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 no. No. Roman Reigns still wins. Yep. So... And not only, that, Bryan, not only that, Daniel Bryan then came out on a Raw following and verbally fellated him because he was told to do so. Yes. Like, here's the thing. That was a giant fuck you to the fans. Mm. And, and the match was a giant fuck you to the fans. Well, I disagree. The match itself was very, very good. But yeah. uh, if you're not a Roman Reigns fan, you're not going to be happy. But it was a Reggie, bit of a cock cheese, that's what I'm time. saying. It was, it was, it was, it was a very poor decision, but eh, we got a good match out of it, so... So, then of course, eventually, it doesn't matter, he went on to uh, be a part of the, I think it was like an eight-man Intercontinental Championship ladder match, which he actually won. He, he got a second WrestleMania moment, even though I think it was maybe the first, if not the second match on the card. It was the opening. Uh, it was the opening, so it wasn't quite the same as what it was, but you know what, he still won a major prestigious title... At WrestleMania, uh, but of course, history likes to repeat itself. Daniel Bryan had to vacate the title again after because this win at WrestleMania. Because some dropped him on his head. So, and that was really everything. Daniel Bryan's career in WWE. We tried to go as fast as we could. There was a lot of notable things that we had to mention. Uh, well, to be fair, so, it was like six. Yeah. It was six or seven years worth of a very storied career, so we couldn't exactly yeah, rush it, through it. I, I was happy that we got through it as, as quickly as we did. The fair. thing is, that last part, you could have just got done in like a minute. Because like literally, maybe this is just me, but after Brian won at WrestleMania 30, I feel like he peaked. Oh, like, yes, that was definitely see, his moment. Yeah, I see what you mean there. Yeah, because like, uh, it didn't help he got injured, but like even when he had the belt, I was like, well, what does he do now? It's like, if you've been watching wrestling up until that point, you would be perfectly fine if you just stopped watching wrestling after WrestleMania 30. Like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't really miss anything, you would be fine, just have that moment forever. WrestleMania you know. 30 kind of feels like a bookend to a lot of things, because Daniel Bryan won the title, that's, that's the big happy ending. Mm -hmm. The Undertaker's streak was broken. Mm -hmm. um, I think that was pretty much all that happened. Really? Just those two things, yeah. really. I don't know. Those the two things. Uh, the women did something. I don't know. For, it was a tag the Rock, match. The Rock, the Rock, Austin, and Hogan were all in the ring at the same time. Oh, for yeah. The last time. No, 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 no. You mean The Rock, Stone Cold, and Stevie Richards? Oh, sorry, Stevie Richards. Yes, my my apologies. Because you had The Rock out there, and then Stone Cold came out, and then it was like, I'll show you. You'll see. No, 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 no. Stevie came out, and he fucked up the name of the uh, building. Yeah, he was like, yeah. well, let me tell you, I'll show you in the Silver Dome. That, that amazing moment. Yes, that amazing moment. But uh, we're not talking about Stevie Richards, we're talking about Daniel Bryan. Mm. So, of course, very story career, very, very, in very interesting. He broke down a lot of barriers. People like Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, uh, even AJ Styles are there because of that man. But, of course, every story has a conspiracy theory. Every story... So every positive has a negative. Everyone who is like, yeah, this is, you know, good for Daniel Bryan. He had a story career. Well done. There's other people who are going to try and do something, say something that is different against the grain. They think there's a deeper story to it. And, of course, this one is no exception. People believe that this is all a conspiracy. Um, Daniel Bryan. This is this is why, if you let me speak, Mr. Kwan. Thank I, you. I, I was just asking. Wow. Right? Great input, Andy. I was just Daniel Bryan was actually cleared to wrestle 
by other doctors. The doctor that said that he couldn't wrestle was WWE's own doctor. Now, I think, what's his name? Mr. Maroon? Joseph Maroon. So, Joseph Maroon, he's a... Uh, so he's he's a very uh, well known, very quote unquote respected doctor in the industry, and his field of uh, specialty is concussions. He worked for the NFL as a concussion specialist, and uh, there was a film. I'm not quite sure what film it is. I think it's uh, just is it the one with Will Smith that's coming out soon? It was. I think it's just called Concussion. Don't yeah. hold me to that. Yeah, and it features him and. He's not portrayed in a very positive light. There's people saying that even though he knew how dangerous concussions were, he was being kept hush-hush by NFL's, uh, their, their sponsors, so that the players would still keep on going and eventually, you know, commit suicide, murder other people, go on drunken uh, de- antidepressant rampages and general things like that. Uh, which, as you can see, cor- co- correlating it with wrestling, kind of, there's, there's some similarities in, in a lot of sense. So, he was the only doctor that said that Daniel Bryan wasn't cleared to, to compete. Um, so, obviously, WWE is going to go with their own doctor. And if he says that he can't compete, then WWE is saying, no, you can't, you can't wrestle. Uh, but a lot of people, well, not a lot of people, but some people are saying that this is actually a publicity stunt by Dr. Maroon. Uh, for the bad PR that he's had in the past, he's got a chance to redeem himself. So, he's being overly cautious to uh, get himself some decent PR, especially with this film coming out. Uh, again, none of this is confirmed. This is all just rumours and speculation. This is what some people are saying. Uh, and what was the other one? There was another one. Oh, yes, Daniel Bryan tried to get his release. And WWE blocked him from doing it. Because they said that they, due to his injury, WWE has a new thing now with their contracts with talents where if a, con- uh, a talent has an injury, their contract is frozen. So if you have a two-year uh, period with WWE, if you have a two-year a contract with WWE and you're injured for eight months of it well that doesn't mean that you'll only wrestle for 14 months it will wrestle it means that you will still wrestle for a total of two years it just means that the eight months that you're fro- that you're injured those co- your contract will be frozen so you'll just continue it afterwards for how at least during his fr- uh, the time his contract was frozen and they said no so this is uh, uh, another potential idea that Daniel Bryan is only doing what AJ Lee did by declaring uh, that he is uh, retired to get out of the contract early. And yet with AJ Lee, it was only really addressed in a, uh, a screen cap of a tweet on WWE television. Yeah. This, yeah. Was, this was a very lengthy, very emotional main event segment on Raw, which kind of leads me to think that this is... It. Free of any conspiracies or anything, and I gotta say, people are surprised no, no, about no, I, this. I, 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 I agree with you, Sam, but I feel that as as journalists, uh, we have to show both sides. Oh of, yes, of, of course. Topics. Of course, we have to address the, uh, the slightly so, of off course, we are going to talk about those who think it's, it's, it's a job. Yes. But uh, but anyway, um, I can't believe I don't what I was going to say. Um, oh yeah, people are surprised about this, and I I can't really see why. If you look at the past two years of his career, you can clearly see that it was a bad omen of things to come when he got injured in like the same sort of body area. He got multiple concussions at the same time of year, like, twice in a row. Yeah. This well, I, Andy isn't surprising. Up, and Andy brought up a very interesting statistic. I think it was in 22 months, he only wrestled for three of them. Yeah, three or four of them, that was mm-hmm. it. And that's, that's, that's an omen in its own right. Like, you... Uh, I mean, uh, as much as it's sad, it didn't surprise me because it's like, okay, he hasn't he hasn't wrestled like really strictly speaking, he hasn't really wrestled that much since but, WrestleMania 30, basically. If anything, he was a part timer until now. Yeah, um, basically. So, if, if not by his own choice, like most of the part timers. And the thing is, is that um, it's sad. But I know about the guy's career. I know the shit that he's done. And it's weird because it's, it's... Here's the thing I've never understood about wrestling. You, you, like, people in the indies will fucking nearly kill themselves to get noticed. And when you make it to WWE, you, you're not there for long because you've, you've fucking shortened your career by about 
five years by, you know... Unless you're John Cena, who's been there since 2002. Yeah, but he hasn't landed on his head on a regular basis for, like, 100 people. You know what I mean? So it's like... It's the thing that winds me up about it now. It's like, we could have had this guy who is basically the best thing since The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin for longer had he not been dropped on his head 17 times a night in front of 30 people. No, no, Andy, I gotta gotta stop you here, alright? I don't get how you think, quote-unquote, the indies, if we're going to lump them in a whole one big category here, is people getting repeatedly dropped on their head. Okay, it's not the same now, but... It's not literally a head-dropping machine, Andy. They're still wrestling. It's just not not the cookie-cutter, safe-as-anything WWE style. Like, that it's, yes, it's got an element of danger to it if you've been doing it for a very long time, like Daniel Bryan had been doing, but it's not nearly as, like, life-cutting as you're making it out to be. I mean, come on. How many, how many guys, how many, how many guys wrestle on the indies before getting to WWE now? Like, think about that. I know, but, like, but now, but now it's completely different, because it's like, you have NXT... And they actually like indie guys, so they just bring him in. But, like, back when Brian, like, was coming into the company and stuff, and, you know, he, I mean, it's still it's still weird like, to me how they have to do all that just to get noticed. It's really weird. And, it, and maybe it's not so much of a problem now, but back then he had to do all that shit to get into the WWE and get a notice in the first place. It's well, really yeah, yeah, you say that. You say that people shouldn't have to do this, but you shit on Roman Reigns for not doing that. You shit on John Cena for not doing that. If these guys don't have a credible indie background, more, more often than not, they're going to be criticised for it. So you I mean, can't now, win. Now the indies you? are different. I mean, like, Brian wrestled twice in one night, and like one of them was a hardcore match, and the other one was like a hard-hitting technical match. The indies have changed since then. It was like the Wild West ten fucking years ago. Everything seems to be, like, not as bad. Well, it entirely depends on the company. Like, comparing Ring of Honor to, say, CZW or IWA Um, Mid-South, like, there's there's clearly a difference. Like, it's really really down to, yes, the time frame, I will give you that, but it's also down to the company. Ring of Honor being indie as fuck, yes, it's also not, like... Deathmatch every match. It's like they have they have their own style that's somewhat respectable. It's not oh, yeah, getting dropped I, on your I, head I, seventeen I, times every night. I think I think I think we're also missing a very key moment in wrestling history, which was of course the Chris Benoit tragedy. Yeah, we don't want that uh, again. We, uh, you know, we're not going to make light of this situation. You know, a couple like two innocent people died uh, due to this, and I think when it was revealed that. Chris Benoit kept working through concussions and injuries and general things that he should have had time fucking off for. I think it opened up not just WWE's eyes, but everybody's eyes as to the dangers of what can happen when you get dropped on your head that much. If this was, let's say, 15 years ago, Daniel Bryan probably would have been working through these concussions. And God knows what could have happened to him. He could have been dead by the age of 40. Uh, which is a trend that has happened for a long time, uh, and you still see like Axel uh, Rotten. Uh, he was he committed suicide not too long ago, which we didn't cover on the show, but it happened. The guy clearly committed suicide, and he wasn't old. The wrestlers have uh, because of like Andy said, it was the Wild West, not just in the Indies, but even in WWE, it was the Wild West even there. People didn't really take into account the, the dangers of concussions and injuries and working through them, uh, what the dangers are on the body. Uh, and I think Edge was really one of the first to kind of realise, look, you know, my body, I think my body's had enough. I'm going to walk out of here while I can still fucking walk. Yeah, that's right. uh, And Daniel Bryan's kind of gone the same road. Otherwise, would he have, he would have gone down the Chris Benoit road because he wouldn't have known any better and God knows what would have happened in the long run. And the thing is as well, like I, I saw, I think Matthew Abotchamania put this on his Twitter. It's like people who've done the diving headbutt in history, like uh, Harley Race invented it. He regrets inventing the damn thing. Yeah. Uh, Dynamite Kid did it. He's in a fucking wheelchair. Uh, Chris Benoit, well, we know what happened to him. 
uh, and Daniel Bryan. So it's like, ban this fucking move! It's the dumbest move ever anyway! Oh, see, I, I don't know about that. I don't know. Yeah, sure, the move is reckless and everything, but... Don't ban it, for God's sake. Just don't don't use it every single match, every single night on all of the fucking house shows that you do. Like, no, say... I agree with Andy. The move doesn't make sense. It really doesn't make sense. It's, it's just a dumb move. Sorry, I agree with Andy. Because unfortunately, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you are a professional wrestler or just me. If I jump off the top rope, I'm still going to land on my fucking head. You can't protect We're... yourself that much. Gravity gra gravity's like that. Like, that's gra the gravity. If I drop my fucking phone now, it drops on the fucking thing because that's gravity. You can't control that. I don't care Physics who you with are. Andy Kwan. You land on he your fucking head. You land on your fucking head. That's why. He just ban the damn move. Degree, and I, would, I would love Andy to be a physics teacher. He would just kick the door down, tell his <laughs> students, Right, this is gravity! <laughs> if you fall Dad. on your head, that's your own fault. It's gravity. <laughs> Look, it's my phone! That's gravity! Not, I'm actually charging my phone. It was just my case. In case anyone was wondering. But the point is, it's like... That move is so bad. It's like the pile driver. Just ban the fucking thing. Oh, well, hang on. That. Hang on. What do you mean, the pile driver? Do you mean the fucking pile driver that broke Stone Cold's neck, or do you mean the Tombstone pile driver the that pile is driver regularly that broke used? His neck. Like, right. Like reckless well, shit I, like that. Is, no, I mean the thing is, I, I don't know. I, I I see Andy's point, but at the same time, every move has an uh, has a you know you can pretty much. Cool. Get hurt on any move. Don't forget, The Rock got hurt from a top rope leg drop at WrestleMania. Uh, mind, are Tyson, we gonna f Sorry. Tyson Kidd broke. Didn't Tyson Kidd get his neck broken by a muscle buster? Yeah. Uh, th there's all sorts of different ways. Kevin Nash tore his quad getting into a ring. Right? That's bad, but did the same thing. And then he tore it because he didn't get help the first time. He tore the other one. Right? This, this is a business where people get hurt. And besides, it's, it's the fact that wrestling is simulated combat. Like, these guys aren't hitting each other. They're hitting the mat with their own bodies. Like, taking bumps isn't easy. Like, it is it is majoritively smoke and mirrors, yes, and there are some moves that are more dangerous than others, but, you know, diving headbutts, can that really be the biggest, like, claim to this whole concussions thing that Daniel Bryan has had? Yeah, because that's your head. No, I no, I disagree. I think chair mm. shots to the head that Chris Benoit would take unprotected. Oh, there you go. I add, that was probably the worst thing. That's why they are I banned see, now. I can see Andy's uh, pattern here. I can see what he's getting at. And I agree to some extent. For me, I don't like the diving headbutt because it just doesn't make sense. Yes, if, if, if you jumped a little bit further, you'd have a splash. Surely landing with your entire weight on a guy would hurt more than just, you know bopping your head on him. I don't know. Have you ever headbutted a man? Not they really. They I don't, they don't, they don't get back up. up. Let me tell you, they don't get back up. All right, they Stone Cold Jesus. I'm just saying. Just saying. From experience. Just you saying. You didn't realize we had an MMA fighter over here. No, that's, that's, no you can't headbutt an MMA. That's how bad it is. Exactly. That's why I'm not an MMA fighter, dickhead. Anyway. There you go. There you go. So, right. this, to wrap us all up, this begs the question... What does the future hold for Daniel Bryan? Is he forever gone from the WWE, or will no. he be in a backstage role? I would I... like to see him as a trainer in NXT, or on the commentary desk. But that's just Well, let, let's not forget, the guy's contract isn't run out, so he is still working mm. for WWE, and I think they will use him as much as they can. I don't think they'll use him on screen for a while. They want to make his retirement speech that he had this past week special. Uh, I think they will use him for network stuff, uh, they're definitely going to bring out some sort of special on the network about him, or if not, a DVD. Um, and then I think eventually I could see him being in NXT as a trainer, as an on-screen GM role, uh, if William Regal leaves or something, or even a commentator. Uh, there's definitely a place for him. He's too big a star uh, to let go uh, and not talk to. But then again, we never know. Who knows? They could He could sign with Ring of Honor again. Uh, that is, of course, where he made his name. He, as you said earlier in the show, he's a founding father of the company. He might want to go back to his roots. He might be a commentator on Ring of Honor. No one really knows at this point. I mean, I think he'd be better at served as a trainer for NXT because the, the, the skill that he has 
I mean, to not no pass- offense. Yeah, no offense against Tenzai slash A Train slash Albert, but Daniel Bryan's actually won the title in the main event of WrestleMania. And if I'm going to be completely honest, I think Bryan is a better wrestler of the two. So, well, well, well you, you, can't, you can't really compare them. I mean, yeah. one is five foot eight and quite skinny, and the other is a powerhouse. Like, that's just two different schools of thought entirely. You can, be okay. good at, you can be good at one and not the other, but it really entirely depends on your body type. But no, I definitely, majoritively, I would say Brian is a better wrestler than A-Train, but, you know, maybe put him in a training role in NXT, see how well he does there. He'll be offered a Legends contract, I assume, at the very least. Yes, yes he will. Hall of Fame? Oh yeah, maybe not, not this year. year, but probably next, next year. year. Yeah, this year's thing is going to Yeah. Next year, probably Hall of Fame, I imagine so. I mean, think about how long was it between Edge's retirement and his induction? A year. A year. A year. Yeah. He, he retired, retired the night after WrestleMania. He did. Yeah. And the, yeah. Then the year. Then the one after that. WrestleMania twenty-eight. Yeah, he was in the Hall of Fame. There you go. There you go. So things are on the up and up for Mr. Brian Danielson. I gotta say. It's been... And plus, he's married to Brie Bella, so what's really... And plus, he might also be still showing up on Total Divas, so... So there you go. If you're a Total Divas fan... <laughs> Fucking tumbleweed. <laughs> Duh. No. Uh, but anyway... Anyway, I think, we should, I think we should wrap the show up, guys. Indeed, I think we should. Uh, what do you people think of Daniel Bryan? What did you think of his career? Did you enjoy what you saw over those many years? Leave a comment below. Let's get some discussion going. You can also visit... Course, hmm? I, I was going to say, of course, don't forget to visit Supla.com mm-hmm. for more news, information. We've got some great articles. Of course, Tanner from Tough Enough came clean about the show. There's more details on Supla.com about what he had to say about the real workings of the show, so go on and read that. Yep, indeed. Next plug. All right. Come on. Next plug, WrestlePundit.com, for all the latest news and rumors in wrestling. We're also on iTunes. Search our name and you'll find us. What social media do we have, Andy? Well, we are on Facebook, we are on Twitter, uh, and we have the same name for everything. And Instagram. Instagram. And and we have Instagram as well. We hardly use it, but we do have Instagram. Same name as everywhere else. We do have Instagram as well. It's the same name for everything, so feel free to like, follow, or whatever the thing is on Instagram. I don't have Instagram, so I don't know what you do on You should get Instagram, but more importantly, everything will be in the description for you. So, and of course we have merchandise at redbubble.com forward slash people forward slash supla. There you go. Buy 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 it if you want. Buy a sticker with Here Comes for Quan. Please do. Uh, We actually did that. It's on my laptop. There you go. So... There you go. This has been the Supla, and that has been Daniel Bryan's career. Thank you, Daniel Bryan. Thank you, Daniel Bryan. And thank you, The Staircase, for the innumerable amount of moments we were given. He will always be there, but he will never be forgotten. Indeed. Indeed. So. Thank you, Staircase. Thank you, Staircase. What happens if Roman comes down the staircase next week? We're going to look stupid. I have been Sam Brooks. I will mark out in that case. And I... Uh, Andy we'll see you next time. You see what I said? The case, their case, in that case. That's wordplay. Wordplay. You see, I have a dream. Oh, God, I can do fucking videos. I can-